So how many seminars have you conducted so far on invisible selling? Exactly 108. 108? And that just talks about your commitment to towards the science. Thank you. But that reminds me of another strategy. It's called commitment and consistency. And that's the name given to that strategy by Bob Cialdini in his book, which, Influence. Which you're following to the T. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I like to call it the FITD strategy or the okay. foot in the nose strategy. Okay. Uh, the essence of the strategy is you want the client to commit at this level. Now, a person is hesitant to commit at this level to a company or a product or a service that he's not aware of or he's not experienced. Hmm. So you start off at a low level. Okay, so if Alpen Lieber chocolates wants to make its way into your heart uh, and gives you the opportunity to buy an Alpen Lieber piece of candy for say 50 paise or 1 rupee, uh, the chances are very high that many people are going to try it out and then maybe they will graduate to buying those packets of Alpin Lieber that they might give to their staff or their family members or they might you know, give that uh, as a birthday celebration gift or something. So it helps to have something, it could be free and we've discussed the free strategy before with its do's and don'ts or it could be something which is extremely low cost. Now, for example, you can buy a, an aerial or a surf excel or a tight sachet for as low as one or two rupees. Now, it's obvious that they don't make money. How can how can they make money uh, when probably the cost of transportation and storage itself would exceed that much? But they're doing it because they feel that once you used their product, the chances of it, somebody buying a 1 kg or a 5 kg pack of say tide of surf excel would be much much higher if he's not experienced the product at all uh, then he is likely to stick with something else that he's experienced so that's the foot in the door strategy you can give free samples you can give low cost uh, methods for people to hop on board uh, when you are communicating with people uh, it could also be used where you are trying to get a person to have a dialogue with you. Uh, so if you have a communication that says, Hi, uh, this is my product. Here are all the details. And uh, that's what you will do. That's, uh, that's the way plenty of advertisers work. That's the way plenty of emailers work. They give you all the details of the product. It has details, maybe benefits. Uh, if you're doing a seminar, maybe timings and venue and everything is mentioned. When I send an email, I, I use the strategy a lot. I do not give out too many details. Uh, for example, a friend of mine, Gary Mills, who is a Hollywood actor, uh, he's an author. Uh, he's doing a session on influence tomorrow at Taj Kulaba, Mumbai. Now, I've invited some of my friends here before the seminar, uh, and I've just told them that here's my friend from Hollywood. He's going to do a session at Taj on Monday. I haven't mentioned the timings. I haven't mentioned with which Taj. Now, some people who are not even interested in really attending a seminar, just because these details have been left out, have, in my view, they have responded with that in mind. Uh, and they want to know what time it is. They want to know which Taj it is. Now, when they're doing that, they themselves are increasing their interest in okay. the subject. Even though they were not interested at first, now they're suddenly interested. Because they can't not be interested in it and do these actions at the same time. It's a conflict. So if they have asked what the timings are and I have responded to that, now they are going to read my communication clearly and decide what to do next. The chances that they come are much, much higher this way than if they get an email from me uh, mentioning all the details and uh, it's a dead end now. Now there's nothing for him to really act upon unless he's actually sure he wants to come to the seminar. So uh, if you can uh, get people to show interest in a small way, uh, it helps to get them to ultimately buy a product or service. Uh, and what I mentioned is also a bit like the Zygarnik effect. But the Zygarnik effect is, uh, is again a very solid, substantial strategy on its own uh, that we will be talking about later.